Hey, what's up? We should be live. Please let me know you can hear me well. Uh, there may be a bit of a strange echo. That actually has nothing to do with my microphone, funny enough. Uh, but whether with the room's acoustics... Good, okay. I'm listening to myself now just to make sure. Sorry, let me, let me turn down my phone uh, as we get to it. Um, I want to test the quality for one second because I am supposed to be streaming at 1080p. Yeah, so it's a little better. That's fine. Uh, let me know if there are any hiccups, because last time was like a real, real nightmare. Uh, the window's open so that I don't die of heat. Um, and I have the ceiling fan going, so lots of background noise. Hopefully, the audio is still half decent. Uh, so we're going to do something fun today. And I thank you so much for joining me here. Let me know what time it is, how you're doing, where you're from. Uh, and we'll get to it. So I've been working on basically developing my technique and my approach and my painting and i'm on to some insights amazing stuff so anyone who joins today will be very hopefully lucky not that you'll necessarily learn something from this because we'll get to that but not necessarily you'll be able to learn something from it but rather just be inspired by it the reason is because th this thing that i'm learning is is something that is unteachable and i think that's what makes it the best funny enough and ironically enough. So, but we'll get to that. Uh, hey, Mafuza, how are you doing? Uh, hey, John, hope everything is going super well with you, my friend. Um, I've been really, man, a lot of things happen, a lot of things change and, and my priorities change. And so I spent a lot of time painting and a lot of time sketching, which, been, which been, has been great fun. Currently, I'm most excited about two things and that is creating. That's the first and the second one is videos, just videos, just content for you, everyone. So I'm super stoked. <clears throat> um, as people are getting in, let's see who's in the house and then I'm gonna kind of redo the intro real fast. Hey, Shariar. I uh, hope you're doing well. Hey, Megan. Hey, Ron. I'm uh, in Sweden right now. Oh, that's awesome. Is it a vacay? Uh, let me know how it's going. Uh, hey, Stefan. Hey, Ron. Glad I can join you today. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Uh, not going to be too long of a live stream, probably about an hour and a half. By the way, there's a crazy... Am I imagining the echo? I don't know. There's. A, I hear a crazy echo here. Um, so I completely changed everything behind me. Like I, we moved the desks here to have one separate desk for work and one separate desk for, for art. They're completely separate. Um, and what this does is hopefully make it a lot easier to actually work here. Um, and one of the byproducts is we threw the, the orange couch. Unfortunately, it just sofa had no room here, even though I love it. It was very hard for me. I get attached to objects too. And it was very hard for me, but we got rid of it. And now there's room here. So there's also a bit more echo. Uh, Lynn, how are you doing? Good morning from Ohio. Hey, Jill, how are you? Uh, watching from Pakistan. Awesome. Uh, Lynn, no echo here. Awesome. Hey, namaste, Gaurav. Uh, hope you're doing well. It's funny that you say namaste. I'm, I've been listening a lot to uh, Dr. Kapil Gupta, if anyone's familiar with him, uh, because he always starts and ends usually with namaste. It's just a brilliant person. It's, it's a bit of a mind twist, so I wouldn't recommend him to anyone, but I enjoy um, his podcasts. Uh, so in any case, we'll get to it. Thank you so much, everyone who is here. Hey, Margarita, shalom back to you. Hey, Logan, how have you been? Um, Logan, by the way, as a side note, I've been extremely frustrated with YouTube's copyright thing. I, I've been, I've, I already filmed the, the episode five reaction to Attack on Titan uh, from England, yes. And <clears throat> I, I've been uploading it, get a copyright issue. Re-uploading, get a copyright issue. Get At some point, I was like, <laughs> threw it all away and decided I'll probably uh, either change series or find a different solution for now or just do more original content. It's so annoying. Like you have to battle YouTube's copyright thing, even though I cut out so much and it's very fair use-ish, I think. But I guess, yeah. Uh, Megan, Leroy, my partner who lives in Sweden. So yes, it's like a vacay going back to Germany in a week. Sadly, I've had a real problem being creative during this visit. We traveled so much and then I got sick. Yeah, I, I'm never creative during like vacations and, and visits and, and being in, in environments that aren't my own. You know, some people expect a vacation to bring something different out of them. I find that I'm much more in my zone when I'm in my environment, in my routine. Funny enough, uh, I think uh, 
I think it's a romantic idea many people have. So don't worry if, if you're not feeling it. I mean, uh, usually it's easier when you have your own desk and your own and all the tools and everything. Uh, by the way, it's really cool that you can visit the two. Um, I like that a lot. Um, so yeah. Uh, Christine, good morning from Minnesota. Thank you for being here. Uh, Prabhakar uh, says, hi, everyone. Uh, sharing the skills multiplies the talent. So you are getting more talented by today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Allison, watching from Somerset, UK. Thank you so much. Jiben, hi from Spain. Thank you for being here. Uh, Colleen, good morning, Liron from Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, Logan down, that's pretty annoying. Yep, <laughs> Pierre. Good evening, Liron. Nearly bedtime, but thought I'd drop in. Thank you so much, Pierre. Um, uh, I don't remember. You had a comment that I wanted to reply to, but I forgot what it was. So sorry about that. Usually what happens is I'll get a bunch of comments on the videos. And so I'll reply to the easier ones or I'll heart the easier ones. The ones that actually have a question or I have some interest in, I skip and save it for later. Because once you heart a comment or like it, YouTube, when you filter by ones I haven't responded to, it doesn't show that. So I uh, just know I saw I saw you have some interesting comments, but one I wanted to reply to and I haven't gotten the chance. Uh, Provocar says, we run. Let's see if something else comes up. Uh, Ellen, hi, everybody from Russia. Cool. We have everyone here ev from everywhere. Helen, hi from England. Uh, Pierre, about the dried paint. Uh, yeah, was it that? Oh, I mean, I don't remember. I don't remember, but we'll get back to it. Let's get to today's video. So I've been really working on making my art more of myself. And I'm on to some crazy, crazy insights about what I love and what I enjoy doing. Hey, Kate, how are you doing? Uh, hope everything is well. It's been a while, right? Hope you're doing well and you're safe. Uh, Loki, hi, everyone. I missed my YouTube community so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and by the way, everyone, I'm sorry. I know I have tons of unanswered messages. Um, realistically i don't know when i'll be able to reply so it sucks i'm sorry about that um monica how are you so yeah um a couple of brain brain mind-blowing insights uh, about how i love to create and diving deeper and doubling down so to speak on my own on my own style uh so a lot of the things i'm going to share with you today aren't things i can really teach it's more like I can show you, you do with it what you want. And that's what's so cool about it. So what I did was film a process for you. Let me show you. Uh, so I filmed myself painting these three paintings. I'm going to move here. <laughs> uh, so I filmed myself doing these. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a video for next week, probably, where I'll show you all three. But the middle one is the one I'm going to explore with you today. So what I thought we'd do is try an interesting concept where what I do is um, go over a video that I pre-filmed with you. So it's almost like watching a na narrated video by me, but the difference is that I can pause, I can rewind, we can, you can ask me questions live. I, I think it's really cool. Um, so that's what we'll do, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I have this entire process, it's fast. You can tell it's very a la prima. Um, it's about 10 minutes long, seven even. Very quick if you cut out you know, everything else. I even tried leaving a lot of the mixing in because it was so short. Um, so that's the main bulk of, of the, the thing that I really want to do today. But just to show you a few other experiments that I did today, uh, I started playing around with scenes that aren't as clear cut that I personally paint a lot. So on the left, you see these uh, couple of um, cargo or freight ships uh, in night. Uh, a very different scene from what I usually paint, uh, but I am utilizing that same direct painting approach to those those two, the, the coffee cup and the, and the boats, the ship, ship scene. Um, and I've been really enjoying it, and I think it's a great kind of representative uh, painting of what I want to do more of. So I'm doubling down on that, and if anything you can take from it is maybe I'll inspire you to do the same and, and go on that journey um, of discovery. That That is just one of the best things that I think I can do uh, for you. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, once we'll get through some more comments and stuff, uh, I will open up the video and we'll just go over it. Uh, and you can ask me whatever questions you want and everything. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, so let's see who else is here. Hey, Charnel, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Betsy. Uh, first, uh, I'm a first time watercolorist at age 80. I'm learning so much from you. I love Israel. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm really happy I can help. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of love on like old videos and people finally discovering, you know, stuff from before. So that's really fun for me. That's been great fun for me. Um, 
Uh, hey, Lollipop, how are you? Uh, Kate says, thanks, still in Ukraine, uh, and I'm excited about your live stream. Thank you so much. So I think we'll get to it, and thank you, everyone, for all the hearts. That's nice. Uh, Betsy, you can you can definitely, yeah, it doesn't matter the age. I think, if anything, you have more wisdom, so it's fun uh, to learn a medium at that uh, stage in life. So let me do this. I'm going to share uh, my Google Chrome tab where the video is, uh, and we'll let it run. We'll give it a try. I honestly don't know like how it would work, if it will be interesting, um, how many questions people will have, and how how much time. Let's oh, just a second. Um, but we'll let it run, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I can actually share a video file. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um, share screen, Chrome tab, direct painting. We'll do that. And I'm going to edit in. Oh, good. It's already showing. Um, and let's see. So it could be like, sorry, like this or like that. I think these are the two setups. Um, I don't know where I'm bigger. I think here. So we'll leave it like that so you can see me too. Uh, and I don't know how fast it's going to run in terms of connection speed, but let's let it run and kind of explore the technique and if you have again any questions feel free to um how do i show the chat okay there we go i'm kind of struggling to see everything simultaneously uh, i should really get another screen uh but in any case yeah so i'm starting with the drawing stage that's fun thank you so much james uh oh by the way the fact that i can actually show your comments while doing the process in the background is so cool and it really sets me free i don't have to you know paint as we talk and focus on that, which is uh, vastly more challenging. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Again, the quality may be a little choppy. You'll have to forgive me for that. I will find a better solution next time if it is. Uh, and just as a quick note, well, let me pause this. I am working, oops, not this, but that. Uh, I am working on finding some better solutions in terms of the speed, uh, my computer. A lot of things are going to get upgraded in the next couple of weeks. So that the live streams quality, you can expect them to go up significantly. Um, just wanted to let you know, it's going to be great fun. I can finally share like most and I'll set up multiple cameras properly and, and film and edit much more easily. You'll see, it's going to be great fun, mostly for me. Uh, so now we're getting to the painting stage. Now this is actually hot press paper. So I am starting with pre-wetting, but every... Everything you see me do in this video is pure instinct. Like there's zero thought, there's zero. I'm not thinking at all. Um, I don't know what you can glean from that. Honestly, I'm telling you because it's really personalized, but I, I'm not thinking about anything. All I'm doing is looking at the reference, really letting it kind of invoke whatever it does in me. And then I'm like, okay, I'll paint it this way. Um, one thing I noticed that I do and very naturally in that very immersed state in painting is I really am in tandem with what's going on on paper. I'm very not only aware of it, it's not a, a logical thing, but it's rather feeling what's going on on paper. And I'm really letting myself enjoy what the paint looks like, what it actually does on paper. It's such a bizarre experience, but there's nothing like everything disappears. I'm really just all in on that. So just a cool thing to have in mind is I'm really zoned out completely in a way, which is funny, you know, and we can again rewind. So if you need me to just let me know. Uh, Lollipop Strawberry, one question in this painting process demo video, what kind of equipment did you use uh, to draw this person painted? Uh, so yeah, just generally my uh, supplies are the normal paints, everything normally I use, French Ultramarine, which you see right now, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Rose, Pyrrol Scarlet. I'm using all of these very freely to get the temperature I want. Uh, yellow Ochre, lemon yellow and we're really moving in from one to another but don't worry i'm gonna zoom in in a second and you'll see more of the details um hey uh, alessandra from italy thank you for being here uh, uh oh thank you so much uh james i think we read that yep um Pierre, I got some Escoda brushes from Jackson's in UK. They're uh, about 10 centimeters long. <laughs> well, like tiny brushes. It's not the collapsible ones. Uh, one of the great things that I've been enjoying when this in this kind of an approach is to almost troll myself in a way. I'm, I'm enjoying doing first and 
thinking afterwards. So I'll just put something there, like this black initial color for the backpack, and then I'll just, okay, I'll figure out what to do with it. You know, uh, I, I don't care if shape touch uh, and blend together because I'm like, I'll deal with it. That's a lot of the mentality I've been having with this is I'll deal with it. Uh, I am doing the techniques, you know, the, I'm trying to match values and colors, but I'm doing that but while being very aware of what I want to do. One trick that works for me, I don't know if it'll work for you, is sometimes to just slow down and focus on the edge of my brush and just look at it, just stare at it. That's a really fun thing for me to do. Um, and, and just see what happens. Looking at it you know and you'll notice i'm working sometimes fast but sometimes i'm slowing down quite a bit because i really want to observe now i did um cut out some moments where nothing happens where i don't mix that i don't paint that i don't do anything but know that there are moments like this where i just stare while it's wet while it's drying i just stare at it you know uh, one really cool thing about about her uh, blouses, you'll notice some areas are warm, some areas have a bit of blue in them, so that's fun. Uh, I'm trying to play around with that because it really enriches it for me, you know, showing all of these contrasts in temperature, in color, in, in shape even. Talking about shape, Colleen asks, I find it hard to get a perspective looking correctly, especially if the people are in the distance. Do you have any tips? Yeah, so for this particular approach, I actually don't, I didn't even bother myself with perspective and, and thinking things through in a way. Um, which is funny. Let me pause this for a second. It's funny. We're, we're like two thirds of the way of the video. Um, with this particular process, again, I really did not bother myself with building things, constructing them three-dimensionally. So I looked at it in a 2D space. And I'm like, okay, where's the where's the head? Is it a circle? I drew a circle. I don't care if it's twisted a bit or whatever. I just drew a circle that kind of represents it. Then I did a line for the shoulders, dropped it down. And we can go back and I'll show you um, if you if you look at this, because I really went through this stage fast. But you'll notice that what guides me here really is, um, see, it's just a circle in a way. And then it stops around the collar of the shirt. And then it's there's a line representing the, the shoulders. It's not even that accurate necessarily. I'm looking at angles a lot. So this is the angle of the hand. This is where the sleeves creases are. And one thing that I could say is let whatever you can guide you. So I'm really, it's almost like climbing a wall and you're grabbing onto different rocks and you need to know like what to grab onto, but, but any rock you can grab, right? So I'm grabbing onto whatever I can. If it's the crease in the shirt that helps me recognize the shape, I'll use that and maybe look at it relations to another thing. If it's the length of the backpack, I'm, I'm grasping at whatever I can to guide me because I'm not doing any construction. I'm not doing like a clear structure to begin with. Um, I really zone out. Now, you do need some experience to do that, but I think the best way to learn it is to actually just do it a bunch of times. And I know it may seem hard at first, um, but just like anything else, you practice it a few times, you can do this. Even if it means you start with a with a circle for the head, a square for the torso, triangles for the legs, something very simplistic, you know. One more thing I'll add to that is I actually like for it not to be too many details at this stage when I'm painting use this approach of just going for it. I actually enjoy the minimalism because it forces me to really pay attention when I paint. Um, so it's almost delegating a lot of the decisions to the painting stage. And that could be seen as something scary. But on the other hand, it could be seen as something very fun and freeing. Because if you delegate it to the painting stage, it's almost like, oh, well, I have to make it, you know? Um, but yeah, Pierre, to have the courage to instinctively use wet and wet and all a prima extraordinary. You know what, Pierre? Funny enough, wet and wet is actually used here to help me with the Alla Prima. It's not like despite wet and wet's challenge, I did it. It's more like I needed to use wet and wet. That's what my what that's what my instinct told me I need to do because it gives you more time. When you wet when you wet things, I want to say wet and when you wet things first, and look at how, how I'm um, now doing you know wet and wet here. Again, when you first Wet things, you have some more time to think, and I have some more time to stare and to truly enjoy the process and take it slow, you know? <clears throat> so it's one of those things I'll actually um, use as a tool 
And remember what I said, I'm going to grasp onto anything I can. Well, that's me grasping onto a, a technique because you can also grasp into a technique, right? One more technique to have in mind is maybe I want to do a clean wash that's if, like an underpainting, right? I still haven't encountered too many examples because I really enjoy the shapes aspect of it, smaller shapes. Um, but yeah, that's that could be seen as something that I'm using to help me climb the, the wall that is the painting, you know? Uh, Plumpy Lump, how are you doing? Good morning, everybody. Uh, Noriaki Kakyoin. Uh, hello, everyone. Is That's from JoJo's, right? I need, I really need to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, uh, Lydia, how are you? Mindfulness and watercolor is a challenge. Mindfulness and watercolor is a challenge. I think it's the easiest thing, you know? Um, I don't know how to explain it, but to me, it's, it is watercolor. It's the two are inseparable. If I'm not in that mindfulness state, I'm not painting. I'm, I'm applying a technique, almost like you would when you tape a painting down. You just, you know, you tape it down. You measure. You make sure it's accurate. It's like it's not really well. You can say that I'm in in the zone when I'm doing that too. But to me, they're inseparable actually, and that's something I'm grateful for ever since I got started with watercolor. Um, I'd argue that if, if it's challenging for you to let go in watercolor, and it's it's a topic I've been tackling from multiple angles now, using different exercises, different stuff like that, I think there's an underlying thing that that is, it, it's not like it's a challenge. There is something that once removed, the challenge will be gone. The natural state to me is not is the lack of challenge in being mindful or being you know zoned out in a way, just letting go. Uh, Noriaki, do you have any tips for getting the values down? I tend to struggle with that. The very straightforward answer would be to practice a lot of value scales and value matching. So you look at a value, you paint it, you try and be accurate. Once it dries, you'll see, oh, I wasn't dark enough. It dried much lighter, and then you fix. You correct course, and you try it again. And you start a feedback loop where you see where you were wrong. But the real secret is not the value scale, but the act of doing it so many times that it becomes second nature to you. and that doesn't mean doing it for months. I think you could master it in a in a week or two, to be honest with you, if you really focus and put in the effort, because it's all about water to paint ratio. So think about it a lot like a scientist, right? You bring in half water, half paint, you get a specific value. You bring three quarters paint, or one quarter water, you get a specific value. It's it's it, it really is very mechanical. So the 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 mechanics of learning that are very much just do it, you know, uh, start a feedback loop um, and see where you struggle and then work on that. You know, it, it has, you kind of have to jump into that stream of doing it actually and, and starting that feedback loop. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you can even provide more details. I'll be happy to give you more insights if I have any. Uh, thank you, Pam. I'm happy that helps. The analogies, I find that I enjoy them a lot uh, lately. Um, uh, Kathy, good morning. My first live stream. Oh, thank you so much. First time you've been here live. That's awesome. Uh, I am super grateful. And don't worry, again, if you want me to rewind to some parts of the process, let me know and we can do that. Um, Alison, Liron, do you avoid certain uh, subjects? I find avoiding landscapes as I feel I'm not great at them. I prefer animals, birds, etc. I feel I should challenge myself to a landscape once a week or something. Um, so I it's funny because I'm starting to develop this weird mindset. I don't think anyone's not great at a specific subject. Um, I think it's a bit more complex than that. And there is, the, of course, the possibility that you just don't enjoy a specific subject. And that's okay. Um, I don't Wait, I think I want to solve this. There's something bugging me. Uh, is there a way to solve it? No, I don't see one now. Anyway. Um, I honestly don't think you can be really bad at something. It's just that maybe you've gotten used to a specific subject. So one example is that what I just showed you earlier, that thing, um, where is it? Uh, this is me painting something I'm so not used to on the left, right? This just night scene. Um, but I'm bringing the same techniques, the same skill, the same experience to it. So I think it's about getting that ball rolling. If you just get that ball rolling and do it, you should, uh, you should get there. And and I think the real tipping point is if you find yourself all of a sudden enjoying painting a landscape, you know? Um, 
One more thing to have in mind that I've been toying around with lately is like, how can you bring the subject you love to a subject you, you're not as used to painting? So to me, I really like the a la prima portrait and people approach. So I'm starting to bring that to landscapes. And it's not that I don't like landscapes, but it's one more way of painting landscapes in a technique or approach or a mindset that's more fun for me. So I'm, I'm bringing the fun to landscape painting. I am bringing my skills to a subject. It's not there's all of these subjects and for this I'm good, for this I'm not as good. I'm bringing the good into the subject. I hope that makes sense. Uh, Lillian, hi Lillian, thank you for sharing your amazing, amazing knowledge. Thank you so much. It's not even knowledge, I would say it's experience. Mostly the things that people find helpful is experience. You can start building that experience. Um, yes, I got the mindfulness by watercolor. That's interesting, yeah. Uh, Janelle, sketching outside and quickly implementing watercolor festival will get you familiarized. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I've been enjoying doing and what I'm really trying to do here. Uh, Eliava, shalom, how are you? Uh, dang, I'm late. I was at work. No worries. No worries. We can go back real quick afterwards and do some highlights from the process. Helen, I've been listening to your old podcasts on Spotify for a couple of years ago. Just wondering why you stopped doing them. Uh, just kind of stopped. Um, I think talking just concepts and ideas is not as fun for me as when there's a visual reference to look at. And I often find myself, the real reason is it's just a lot of work. So one thing I could do is grab the audio, for example, from these kinds of live streams and turn it into it. But that's a lot of post-production work. I just don't have the time for it, unfortunately. I have to prioritize it over other things. Um, so the re that's the real answer. But I think the main value I give is often it happens when there's a visual thing to relate to, to talk about, to show, and then to bounce off of. The one exception to that is interviews. So when I did the interviews, that was purely like conversational and fun. Um, so yeah, that, the reason is mostly just it's a lot of work and I didn't prioritize it enough. Um, but yeah, sorry, maybe I'll go back to it at some point. Like my production here is going to become much more efficient. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm developing a way to film all cameras simultaneously and do all the editing before I even start editing the video. So my editing process should become much, much faster. And maybe then I'll devote more time to other things. So yeah, Noriaki, actually uh, doing open air painting seems fun. Any tip for starting out? If it seems fun for you, my tip for you is to just do it. Experience it. You know, especially if you haven't done it before, because you say it seems fun. I would say don't even look for any advice. But, but rather experience it on your own. There's something magical in experiencing it on your own without having any preconceptions because that tends to slow you down and then you start looking for things that aren't really there because you heard, you know, you heard them from someone else. Instead, just do it and experience it. And then you'll have specific questions maybe to ask, you know? I hope that makes sense. Uh, Lydia, for me, watercolor requires a lot of uh, forethought and destroys a spontaneity. Yeah, that's, that's a harsh thing to deal with. Yeah, I get it, you know. Um, yep, hopefully, maybe I'll do a video on it. It's a good topic. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, discuss it. Um, let's uh, let this video continue running. We're really getting near uh, the end here, but there will be background and some more details. Uh, Ellison, thanks to run makes total sense and hasn't thought of it that way. Bring on the landscapes. Yep, yep. You bring the fun to them. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Pam, still looking forward to our interview. Yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm sorry about that, Pam. It's it's just silly me. Um, I'm gonna make a note right now to email you after this is done, uh, and we'll get it going. Okay, and we'll 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 get it scheduled. Uh, it's things are still hectic. I'll admit, like every day I'm changing everything around here, and and it takes time. Like one day, so I built a new uh, painting desk. That took me like five hours, just or four hours, something like that, and then organize the studio. Half a day gone just for that. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, it's something that I really want to do. And it, it, honestly, it's very easy for me just to be interviewed. It's like, let's schedule it and get it done. Um, we'll definitely get it done. Sorry that it took so long. Um, Cubs away and hey, Liron, great to see you. Great to see you too, my friend. Uh, Paulina, do you travel to group events so we can join you? Um, not really. Um, I am considering combining a vacation with actually a workshop somewhere. Uh, it's something I've been talking about for a while now. You know what? 
I'll think about it. I'm actually not sure that's the right choice for me. Um, it's very rare, honestly, very rare. I don't do, you know, many one-on-ones. I really, I find that it's not as, as gratifying to me as, as doing this, you know, talking to many people in a more leveraged way. Uh, helping many people simultaneously. It's just different for me, you know? I used to do a lot of private lessons, like, you know, physical in here, <laughs> and I just don't do these as much. Yeah, thank you so much, Pam, for understanding. From Texas, cool. Uh, Pierre, I think about how to paint something for days and days, then rip into it and finish. Often disappointed in half an hour. Should I change this? Um, I honestly n almost never think about something I'm going to paint, uh, what I do is, let me rewind back. Um, <clears throat> what I'll often do, let's just let it run in the background. And maybe I'll do, uh, um, what can I do? Let's do this. Now you can see me and the process is kind of in the background. Um, to me, it's the opposite. I'll just not think about it and then I'll paint it. And if I dislike it, I'll paint it again and again. Um, you shouldn't necessarily change anything. It's more about like, is it actually serving you or not? If it's serving you, keep it, you know, keep doing it. But if it's not, maybe it's worthwhile looking at a different modus operandi, you know? Um, being disappointed with your art is something that happens. Um, it happens to me all the time, but I'm, I'm so past that, you know, I did this painting today and at first I loved it. Then I was like, meh. And then, I, but I'm so past it. I'm like, like oh, that's cool. Uh, I painted something in a vastly different technique. And now I know how to do that. And I'll, I'll just do another attempt, either at this or at a similar scene. So it's so much like it's disappointment is, you know, your, your mind creates that. It's not, there, there isn't anything to be disappointed about. The painting isn't disappointing. The painting, someone else would look at it and say it's a masterpiece. Someone else, you know, everyone will have their own experience. So if you generate that disappointment and you can decide to want to improve while not being disappointed, you know, because I want to improve all the time. But it's been, it's been a while since I was really disappointed by a painting, even the ones that I consider really bad, you know. Um, so just a thought. <laughs> Loki, some interesting advice. Yep. Don't follow the rules, then I don't. I don't plan sketch. Leave white paper. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's I love that mentality. Or paint directly, you know, just without without any plan. That's that's something interesting to try out. Uh, I'm really enjoying. Um, I don't know what's up with the connection, but that's fine. That happens. Um, sometimes it just goes to craps. It looks bad. I love how the video I'm streaming looks good, but the camera doesn't look good. That's so funny. What if I do this? Maybe let's see. So if I do this, does it improve? Let, I'm testing it out because this is um, I'm using the same software I'm used to StreamYard, but I'm actually uh, I upgraded my plan. So I'm already the the quality should already be better. I upgraded my um, my plan to the 1080p. Um, so yeah, uh, Pierre, yes, it's making me terrified of the painting part. Yeah, so honestly, there's nothing to be terrified of. Um, once you understand that, you'll explode in in enjoyment, in painting, and everything. There's really nothing to be terrified of. Um, I get that not in watercolor. I sometimes will get that when it comes to the manga. I want to start working on, which is something very different. I'm less experienced in it. It's harder. Um, but once I do some things that work for me, uh, I get past that and I end up doing something that looks really good. And all of the thoughts and all of the being terrified was just a figment of my own brain. Uh, lollipop. Is it possible when you're painting, you can do it in any type of paper? I have all watercolor papers. And also, can you send me the link to the equipment painting you did uh, on your uh, live painting? So wait, is it possible when you're painting, you can do it in any type of paper? Um, yeah, but it has to be like suited for watercolor. So if you use printer paper, you're going to have a bad time. I did that in the past. Uh, it's possible. It's just not really fun. 
um, the link to so the best link to check out is actually let me share it with you in the chat. That's where I have all of my stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna paste it in the chat now. Um, here we go. All right, it's this. It's just freewatercolor.com/gear. I have pretty much everything I use there, including a Plan Air um, easel. So yeah, uh, Nancy, find something about your painting you like. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's always something I try to do. You know, what I love about this one is the technique I used. Funny enough, like how I just went kind of all out with the. There we go. With the wash, it's all done in, in one wash almost. Um, one thing I've been trying to do, so I've been playing around with my supplies too. Today I got this crazy idea. What if I fill in my, let's see what's slowing down the connection because that's a bit annoying. Let's see here. You know, I see that the connection is slow. So it actually probably has nothing to do with, um, with my, uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with my computer. It's just a connection. Sometimes that happens. That's okay. Um, what was my point? Yeah, so just the different techniques. So I was playing around with, um, let me show you. So usually I'll use this, you know, um, spray bottle to spray some water, keep the paints fresh and all of that. Then I get this crazy idea. What if I prepare another bottle with paint. <laughs> so now I have this little sprayer with quinacridone rose. To be honest with you, it's not thick enough. It looks thick, but once I apply it, it's actually not that strong. I need to add more paint, pasty paint to it and mix. Um, and what if I use that while I paint, either to pre-wet or to, you know, this idea I would have never even thought of had I not just dove in head first into discovering what I like to paint, what's the technique I enjoy using, and and double down on that. You know, if I would follow other people's advice, just watch tutorials strictly uh, without doing any development of my own at my own solitary time, I would have never allowed myself to do something that strange. I would have never had that idea to begin with. Um, so I think there is something very effective in the loneliness of making art, uh, funny enough. You know, uh, Shelly Pryor, fine art. How are you, Shelly? It's been a while. Uh, good morning, Liron and friends. Uh, appointment made me late to the party this morning. Yeah, no worries. I'm letting this video run in the background and we're kind of discussing the process. And if you have any questions about a specific stage, let me know. This is hot press paper. So I'm using very watery first washes or kind of I'm beginning with a lot of water to let it. Um, you know, last for a long time. Hot press paper is a little more sensitive to differences in wetness and tends to create more effects, whether you desire them or not. Uh, Pam, you are dropping with the light groups of watercolor this morning. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I've been just having a lot of fun. Um, this It's just watercolor just instantly became more fun for me <clears throat> in the last 48 hours. <laughs> a lot of things connected for me, honestly, that I'm just enjoying myself. Uh, and I haven't even been painting. I love my my uh, recommendations here. I think I actually think it's I'm not even logged into my YouTube account. Japanese. So I, I need to watch these videos. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to let it run one more time if anyone has questions and then we'll go back to some, you know, venting and talking about other stuff. Uh, if you want to. And thank you to anyone who just joined. Really appreciate it. Uh, we're looking at a process again. I painted it, pre-painted it, uh, and I thought it would be fun to give my commentary kind of like this, and then we can pause. You can ask questions about specific things. This process is short. It's about, let me see how long it was. Um, one second. Let's figure it out. So this is a seven minute long video. I can do that for an hour long video, you know, whatever you want. And it's just can give us a bit more freedom. Uh, so let me know if that's something you're interested in. Hey, Glenda, how are you doing? Good morning from West Virginia. Been a while. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, Paulina, is your paper laying flat? No, it's not. It's at a bit of an angle because I find that it helps me. Um, you will notice once I put the water that things start to bead down uh, a bit. You know, it's subtle, but you see it. Um, it's very rare for me to paint just flat, completely flat. Um, sometimes you don't need a strong angle and it can be counterproductive. Things flow too much. But 
I find that a minimal angle is almost always required because of the technique of working from top to bottom. Now, you don't have to work from top to bottom. It's just very efficient, you know? So I've, I've been really diving deeper into um, questioning the way I'm doing things, but this is one of those things that actually help and work really well. Uh, so I'm keeping them for now. <laughs> uh, Laura, good morning from California. Thank you for being here, Laura. Uh, and by the way, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate just your presence here. It means a lot to me. Uh, a lot of people have purchased the courses in the last 24 hours. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. If that's you, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for supporting my work. That's like huge, huge, huge. People always... Um, uh, what's a, berate me for not uh, mentioning the Patreon. So if you do want to support me just by donations and you don't want a course or anything like that, you can actually support me on Patreon. I give only one perk, nothing else except for the critiques tier, which is currently closed. I'll talk about that in the future maybe, but uh, I only give one perk and that is you get credit at the end of the video. I actually show the names of all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, so if you want that, um, go ahead <laughs> and check it out. Uh, there aren't any, you know, real perks. Uh, I just don't have time to manage that. Honestly, I need to spend more time painting and making videos. So uh, I'm going to drop it uh, in the chat. If you do want to support me that way and get a credit at the end of the video, your name will be running on the screen. That's fun. Um, because a lot of people have been telling me you have to you have to mention it in the video. So here we go. Uh, intuitive art and cooking. Nita Engel opened some inspiring channels for me. Did you find her technique to be helpful? Actually, yes. Um, not in the sense of learning from her technique, but rather inspiration for what is possible. Because I find her technical videos, the, the videos are good. The technical explanations in the book. I didn't find too helpful because it was so high level that I just didn't get most of it. It went over my head. Um, the videos, yes, they're very helpful. I've seen a few on YouTube, not too many of them, but they're very useful. <clears throat> but again, I didn't get much technique wise. I got a lot of like, wow, this is possible. You can get like super realistic, beautiful impression by painting loosely with very innovative techniques by pouring water, doing things that, that are deemed crazy, and it, it's fun, and it looks this good. That's what I got from her. Uh, very, very um, impressive painter. And for anyone who wants to look her up, uh, it's uh, angle with an E in case you're, you're uh, typing it in as we speak. Um, just great. Wait, I highly recommend her book. Uh, I think I also have it in my gear page. By the way, Pierre, you give so much so generously. Yeah, it's it's honestly, I'm I'm selfish about it. It's so fun. I, I enjoy it. You know, that's what I enjoy. I wouldn't know what to do if I'm not doing any videos. Like, what would I do? Paint all day and then post it just like that. Like, I love the interaction. So you know, plumpy lump. I found I learn a lot watching the process than being told the process. Is this uh, wet and wet? By the way, no. Everything here is dry. For starters, no wet and wet. I'll sometimes pre-wet a section, but everything is wet and dry. Uh, I learn a lot from watching than being told the process. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, the, the narration and the explanation is just a, an accompaniment. You actually have to look at what's going on and look where most people don't look, like the palette, which I'm, I'm at fault of not showing well enough sometimes, the towel on which the artist wets, the, dries the brush, the water bucket, all of these things are very, very important, actually. Uh, so, yeah. Pam, uh, some technique videos, I feel like someone is asking me to do math. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right, Pam. My brain shuts off is the most perfect way of putting it. This, what I'm doing here in this video, is the opposite of brain shutting off. It's brain opening up. And if you can find the thing that opens and sparks up your brain, that's, of course, of course, you're going to disregard a formula. You know, if, if I'm telling you do this amount of dabs of the brush on the, the sponge or the, the, uh, pa the paper towel and, and mix exactly three to one ratio of water to paint, you know, I can give you the feeling, but to actually give formulas can be just overwhelming, boring. It's not for me to, I hate that type of math. You know, I loved geometry as a kid. I, I was so good at it and in high school, but I hated algebra. I hated equations. I just disliked it. And my brain very often shut off. Now, I was good at it for, to the person looking from the side, but I suffered through it, you know. If anything, I loved physics, mechanics, electricity more because it was in some 
in a stronger way related to real life applications. Math can be very practical. It's just that usually the teachers who teach it do it in a boring, very tedious way. If you can bring it, show how you know a tangent actually works and what it does and the implications and show I forgot what you call that thing that I hated and then I discovered a, a good way to learn it. You know, a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, intuitive art and in cooking. And by the way, your username could have, couldn't have been more perfect, right? Thank you for the answer. Did she mean to use soap as a resist? I was trying to understand that. Oh, I actually don't know. I don't remember that specific technique. I actually don't. Uh, but I, you know, try it out. That's what I can tell you. Uh, Paula, good morning from Wisconsin. I'm exploring new ideas too and trying to forge my own path of creativity, combining watercolor and other mediums. That's awesome. I'll be trying your spray bottle idea. That's cool. You know, one thing that I love about what you just said is combining watercolor and other mediums. Because who said you only have to use watercolor? You know, why, why would anyone commit to one medium? Why not use everything together? You know, every medium. It's like different colors. Use whatever you want. Now, I just don't like as much opaque mediums, so I'm not going to use them. But but I love, you know, bringing in um, very thick paint onto a wet wash. That could be almost considered like uh, like thick. You know, I'm using a designer's wash because John got me a bottle. Let me go ahead and pause this and just place uh, the painting to the side. Uh, we'll stop sharing. Um, you know, using very thick paint straight out of the tube of a designer's wash it's gouache, but who cares? It works really well with watercolor or sketching maybe or pen, you know, uh, pen and ink, whatever it is. Why be limited to just one medium? You know, just do whatever you want. Now, let me uh, just do one small thing on my phone. <laughs> I'll be back in a second with, and let me open in the meantime, actually, I want to show you uh, this in the background. The final result of what I just showed you. Um, and then I'm going to uh, jump into some other things. Um, just a second. Um, so, yeah, um, I want to show you this and then I want to go back. Wait, I need to go here <laughs> to these three. So this is what I'll show you next week. So there's this painting we just finished, of course. And then there are two more that I really, really like. And hopefully you can tell, like, you can actually see and understand what you're looking at. Hopefully it's accurate enough, right? I know it's a little on the abstract side, but that's the fun part about it. Uh, and this one too, which I really, really like. There's a lot of good play. Let me uh, just remove the uh, message for a second. There's a lot of um, play of negative space here, which is beautiful, beautiful. So just a lot of fun. I'm going to show you uh, these other two processes in, in the next week's video. I actually spent a lot of time on this one, believe it or not, like almost as long as I did on this one. So it's uh, just fun, just a fun approach, just going for it and and really using your senses real time to figure out what to do. I just find that so enjoyable, you know. Um, hey, Richard, how are you doing? I love, love your recent posts. Like I think I commented on two or shared one and commented on one. Just great, great work. Um, uh, Marguerite, I was thinking of having spray bottles with pigment in. Yeah, it's just a fun thing to try, and maybe I'll end up not using it as much. But, you know, I want the paint to be thick. So the the, the main application I thought for it was uh, it's a fast way to change the temperature of an already wet area. So let's say I did a big wash like this one that covers up a big space of the paper. And then I want to, and it's still wet. All of it is wet, right? It's one big wet wetness. Um, to spray some warmth on it and in real time make it warmer. I think that's like a really interesting tool to have. So why not, you know, why not use it? Um, so I'll be playing around with this and see how it works for me. And, you know, Stefan, I didn't dare yet, but I thought about that too. What, using uh, uh, the spray bottle or just the different medium? Uh, intuitive art and cooking. I find my main struggle to be the battle esteem water and expect amount of pigment. Not sure what you meant by that. Let me try again. You, did you do a voice to message or is it the autocorrect? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, the battle between the exact uh, right amount of water and the right amount of paint. Yeah, that's just, you have to paint a lot and, and let it become second nature. Then you can bring out the expressiveness. Um, in these very initial stages, it's all about just doing, just doing, rather than thinking even. 
um, a bunch of people in Wisconsin. That's very Skip Lawrence. Yeah, there is something about the way he interprets the subject itself is Skip Lawrence, right? He interprets the, uh, you know, light and shadow, and that's it. Just two values in a way. But but I expanded it to more than two values. Uh, one thing that I did at the very end of this process in particular that really made it was that blue next to her blonde hair. I wanted to create some kind of contrast with the hair in the background because the hair seemed lighter than the background. The background was indeed cooler. That was a genius move. If you remove that piece of blue, the painting becomes significantly less interesting in my opinion. That blue right there puts all the rest of the warm colors in the right context. I love that. So it just goes to show you how a small thing can really make a big difference. Uh, Margarita, water is never enough unless you're doing uh, dry technique. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, look at Mark Foley, the way he paints. He started uploading some processes here and there, and he's just pouring it over. It's so fun. Uh, no drawing in these examples, straight paint. No, I actually did some drawing. So maybe, Shelly, maybe you missed the process. I, I did some drawing, and I am showing it. Um, and by the way, to anyone who missed, because we went through the process a couple of times, let me know if you want me to go over it again, but I will show this process to next week's video, not just the one I'm having on the screen right now, but also this one. I will show uh, all of these. Um, I actually did a sketch and you can see it in the, in this image. Uh, I did do a sketch. Um, I, I do find something there can help with the overall proportions. And then I let myself kind of figure out the rest, which is uh, great fun. <clears throat> Let's see here. Oh, yeah, we read that. Light sculpture. Yep, yep. Uh, autocorrect is ruining my life. <laughs> yeah, that's a well-known issue. I turned off autocorrect. I have no autocorrect on anything. And I, I mistype all the time, and it just looks weird. But uh, I, it's better than autocorrect to me. Tie-dye and Don, Wisconsin likes Leron. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. Are you from Wisconsin too? I don't remember. Uh, Andreas, hi, Leron. Good to see you. Question, why do all of my interesting brush marks end up on my test paper rather than on the painting? Andreas, dare I say that there is no difference between the two? You're different. <laughs> we have this tendency to look at sketches in a more favorable light as opposed to finished paintings that are meant to be, are supposed to be. And that actually influences the way we paint. Because when you do a test mark on a test paper, you just do. And when you paint on the actual painting, you think more. Dare I say overthink. Something to have in mind. Because you have the same skill when you're making that mark on the test paper. So why not treat your painting as the test paper. Why not treat the subject you hate as a subject you love? See how much power you have in all of that? It's all our brains messing us up. It's all it is. So if you're producing these interesting brush marks on the test paper, you're doing something right. Use that. Just do that. Same way. Uh, Stefan, yeah, you were referring to the spray bottle trick. Yeah, so I have so many. So And here I have to thank John again. I have so many spray bottles thanks to you that I'm like, should I do one for every primary color? And it's thanks to you, John, that I can do that. Um, so yeah, I have a spare like five or six more. And I'll, I'll just do that, you know, it could be fun. Margarita, rules are made to be broken. Never be afraid of experimentation. Set yourself free. Yep. Don't be scared to follow the rules when you want to, too, by the way. Uh, Stefan, could you say a little more about how you went about those cargo ships you showed earlier? Yeah, it's a shame I didn't film that. Uh, I can definitely do that. And Tyndine says, yes, near Green Bay. I also enjoy multimedia makes things pop. That's cool. So, yeah, uh, let me bring it. Uh, let me just put it on the screen. Um, yeah, it's an interesting piece. So I basically used the same process. I painted the sky, didn't allow for them any time to dry and then went on with the, the water and the boat and everything. Um, and then while it was still wet, I kept adding to it, going darker again, going darker again, lifting where, where necessary. And I kind of disregarded the stage of wetness it's at for the most part and just kind of went for it. Um, so very a la prima approach. You can see by these um, 
I don't know what you'd call these, all the cranes on top, especially the more uh, vertical ones, that they were done wet and wet while everything was still wet and then done again, wet on dry. And I just did that multiple times. The only thing that is process oriented here is adding the highlights after the fact, right? That's the only thing that I that I did afterwards in stages. And also the opaque paint that is the writing on the different elements. Now you have to understand this is this big. When a painting is this small rather, uh, it's much more easy to let the technique um, flow a bit because, because it's such a small area. You don't have to worry about a big area and one area starts to dry, the other is still wet and all of that. You don't need to worry about any of that. So I would say if you want to experiment with a bit of a different scene and a bit of a direct process, work small. You know, I would recommend working big for once you kind of know what you're doing. Painting big can make your mistakes more obsolete. No one notices if you are even a centimeter off when the painting is huge. Uh, in theory, the bigger you paint, the more forgiving it is with mistakes. But for starters and techniques and experimentation, I love the small paint. Now, some people may say, I feel the, the great sense of freedom when I just go for it and go crazy and paint you know, however I want on a, on, a, on a huge piece of paper, right? So do you, to me, I find that the small piece of paper allows me for a lot of freedom. Uh, I hope that it makes sense. Just putting in the values and colors wherever I see them. That's really how I did this process. Um, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts, everyone here, about this kind of a painting. The glass on the right, I did the exact same thing, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious to hear your thoughts on these two because it's very different. It's much more direct, much more raw. Um, and, but it is the approach I aim at. Not necessarily the style or finished result I aim at, but the approach. Approach. I do foresee this result improving with time. The process is going to be the same. Um, so let me know if that answers it. If you have any questions about a particular section of it, Stefan, let me know and I can kind of break that down for you. Uh, Pam, thinking gets me in trouble. I give up and I have, uh, and then I have a great result. That's that's hilarious how that works, right? Uh, hi, Shibom, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Uh, Kathy, I love the overthinking statement. Thanks. Yeah, happy that helps. Laura, Liron, I've noticed you're using hot press paper regularly. Has this become your preference? No, not really. I just have a lot of it and I kind of go through it. Um, I go through it when I want to work wetter because it requires that. Um, but I actually I actually did. Um, hmm. So so this, what you're seeing on screen is actually um, uh, rough paper. It's the Baohong rough paper. But this is hot press. So I actually, just today, I had this thought of, I want to do both. I want to constantly do both and grow in both. So I definitely don't have a preference. Um, I love both in different ways. But I, in the past, I didn't like hot press. So voila, you know, uh, character development for me. Uh, so yeah, that's funny. Uh, thanks, Iran. Good night, all. Yeah, Pierre, have a great uh, night. Uh, John, I think putting your paint in a spray bottle is a great idea. Could you create a first wash from them? Yeah, that's another thing that I've been thinking. So if you, in theory, if you have all three primary colors, you can do an underpainting just like that, like, like spray all over the place. Um, you would get it fragmented, of course, because it's spraying water. It's not going to be even. Um, you could pre-wet and then do it, right? That's a thought. Pre-wet the paper and then get, just go... And you'll be good. Now, the only limitation is, think about it this way. The amount of water that fits in this bottle is much greater than the amount of bottle, the amount of water your brush picks up. So this means that for this to show, you need so much paint. So I really spilled into this to paint out of the tube. Like, you know, it's pasty, right? So I did like this long of a paste thin, but this long of a paste. And it's still not enough. So that's the one thing you have to prepare for. You could use, uh, what's it called, uh, Dr. PH thing, uh, which is more concentrated, I think, than watercolor. But you need a lot of paint. I would argue probably you need almost half a tube or not, not well, depending on the size of the tube. So let's say if you're using a five millimeter milliliter tube, like the smaller ones, I'd argue you need like at least half of that in here to make it show. Now I'm using 15 milliliter, 10 milliliter, you need a lot of paint. So just have that in mind. I know it looks strong. It's actually not strong on paper. So yeah, just have that in mind. Because sometimes my first washes, you know, they're light, but not that light. Um, so that's something you need to prepare for. 
but fun, you know, great fun, definitely a possibility. Uh, in in a in a way that's smoother, you know, because you don't use the brush, you just spray it in an area, almost like a um, an airbrush, you know. Uh, someone special, highly Rod, thank you so much for being here. Someone special. Uh, let's go to the next one you wrote, and then we'll go back uh, to Stefan. Uh, your palette has a lot of grays. It triggers my OCD. Please clean it sometimes. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Stefan Glass and Boats, I really love. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, good advice, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, definitely happy I could help. Uh, Plumpy Lump, what ratio do you use for the spray? Yeah, I just covered that. Um, I honestly wouldn't even know to tell you. It's just so much water. Just think about it. How much water fits in that bottle as opposed to the water you pick up with a brush and bring to the palette? Bring water, palette, water, palette. You know, I think if you take like a this big of a brush, right? Let's take this big of a brush, dip it in the bucket, and then above the spray bottle, go like this and soak it in just the water. I think you'll do this like 30 times until you fill it in. We could do this experiment, but think about it this way. If you bring it like three, you need 30 times more paint than you would use just in this very hypothetical, inaccurate calculation, right? So you need a lot of paint. But the ratio, it depends on what you want to achieve, of course, right? So if you want it to be a thin wash, um, you'll, you'll use maybe very roughly quarter to three quarters so quarter paint that would be like a lighter wash um so the weight of the bottle in paint right um and it's very easy to calculate now that i think about it i could weigh this i think this is about 70 millimeter milliliters actually that makes sense so this is probably about 70 to 100 milliliter or am i exaggerating maybe 50 milliliter uh, John, let me know if you remember, because I think you you gave me this one with uh, a bunch of others. I think maybe it's written somewhere. Nope. It has 25 on the cap, but I don't know. I'd have to weigh it. I have a scale, like a kitchen scale. I'll weigh it. Maybe it's 25 to 50 milliliter. So let's say you want, you're using a 5 milliliter bra um, uh, tube. And you want it to be quarter. Even if you dump in all of the five milliliter into a twenty-five milliliter, it's still less than a quarter. It's a fifth. So based on that, you can figure it out, right? And, and I only now realize I need to dump a lot more paint into this if I wanted to show. Uh, so yeah, now you don't have to sh to have it show. You don't have to have it like a thin wash. You can have it like a really pale wash, right? Um, but the more you spray, it's going to stay the same, the same value and the same saturation. Right, because you can't bring in more. It's what you have mixed there is pre-mix. So the more you spray, it's going to look the same. So one more thing to have in mind. Uh, Plumpy lump, my bed taking my bed taking care of some chickens on my end, listening as much as I can. Yeah, no worries. And thank you for being here. Uh, I'm 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 okay with that. It's okay if you miss some stuff. Katie, highly running. So glad to see you live. Have you continued practicing water reflections, uh, or what can one do to become better at the painting abstract to become realistic at the end? Have a great day. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I it's been a while since I did that. You know, kind of with the ships here. There's a bit of that, but not really. Um, I loved it. I should do that again. Um, what can one do to become better at it? Uh, the abstract, like, you know, just abstract. I will say, really look at what you're painting. Really let it sink in, absorbed, right? Because you have to see it in a clean way. That's what I think. Or not, you know, you can go hyper-realistic. There are plenty of ways to do this. But um, I think to really become immersed in the process is one of the things that will help with that. Um, when you remove everything else, all worries, all fears, all interruptions. Now, it's very hard to do, right? Um, I think maybe one can find their own triggers for that, for happiness and for looseness. Because because I can tell you, that don't be afraid. Don't, don't feel um, terrified by the painting process. But you can't not be what you are. You know, if you're scared, you can't hit a button and not be scared. Um, so I'm still figuring it out, you know, honestly, just doing worked for me, just painting a lot worked for me, whatever I want to improve it. That's what I would do a lot. Uh, that's, that's the straightforward answer, you know, um, the very boring one, uh, Joss or Yoss, let me know how to pronounce it. Hello, Liron. Hi, all from France. Always a pleasure to see and listen to you. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Shelly says it looks like a, a 20Z 60 milliliter. Yeah, that's a possibility. So if it's 60 milliliter, you can dump like a 15 milliliter tube in it and then you'll get a quarter value. Just think about it this way. That's crazy. Uh, you could fill one quarter or less of the bottle if you want to experiment without using so much paint. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, just use less water. But I was like, nah, I'm going to fill it all up. Uh, but that's definitely a solution. Uh, John says 50 milliliter. Oh, awesome, awesome. Good to know, John. Thank you so much. So 50 milliliter, yeah. So you're going to have to dump like a full 15, 15 milliliter tube just to see something. So we'll fill it halfway through. Yep, definitely. Uh, Paula, I've seen a U.S. artist use a spray bottle with paint. He mentioned using honey-based paint as it didn't clog up the nozzle. Interesting. So I'm using such a watered-down paint that I doubt it will clog up the nozzle, but it's good to know. Um, so this is Daniel Smith. Now, the good thing is that the Quinacridone Rose paint is especially soft. The Daniel Smith one, the mix is especially soft. And I think Quinacridone Rose tends to be soft, so that's a good thing. My yellow ochre shouldn't have problems because it's M. Graham, so that's soft too, oil, ba um, oil honey base. So yeah, that's a, good, that's a good thing to have in mind. I'll have to experiment. I don't think it'll be thick enough to even matter, but a good point. Let me drink some water. Uh, Robin Huizing. Good morning. Sorry, I'm late. I'm excited. I'm getting uh, flesh tones uh, down. Must be under understanding values. Uh, better good paper is game show. Yeah, good paper is huge. And yeah, getting skin tones is um, not that hard. Really not. Paint scared, no courage required. Uh, Margarita, just thinking that if we have to use spray bottles with pigments, we should avoid granulating one. So no cobalt, no ultramarine. So why is that? Because I actually like the look. So I would ask why why avoid it? Let me know. Uh, Deep Christian, how are you, my friend? Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. Uh, I have been really enjoying my creation lately. Really enjoying it. Let's go back to this one that I've shown you earlier. Um, one thing I want to play around with is I can uh, use music now in this software. So let's see. Let me give it a try. It may be annoying. I'm going to lower the volume. I want to just see how it works. I'm going to use this stream as experimentation. So I have to forgive me. Let's do lo-fi. Let's see if it works or if it slows down the connection. Wait. Okay. So I wonder how it balances with my voice. Now, there is a reason I'm testing it out. Okay. Let me mute it. Okay. Good. Because uh, I want to start using like... Um, um, voice effects, different voice effects like uh, uh, cloud clapping and cheering, stuff like that. Uh, that'll be fun, I think, uh, just to play around with. So uh, all sorts of, you know, if someone's uh, dropping a super chat, I can do like, woo, like clap and cheer. Uh, so that's probably something that'll happen. Um, yeah. Anthony Fernandez, I started watching you ever since the pandemic chaos. To be honest, it was quite a, a disaster amid all the things going awry. Distressor, sorry, not a disaster. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that that was the main thing, you know. When COVID hit and everything, I was like, I gained a new purpose because now I can help all these people. And I, I think I increased my output a bit during that time. So, yeah. Uh, intuitive, what videos uh, do you know about of Nita Angle? I tried to see online and found one YouTube video I'd like to get. So I saw one that she was just playing around with a very wet surface and moving it and, and raising it like up and oh, wait, let me show both like this, playing around with it. Uh, another one was the one where she did rings of color. So she did blue and then red and yellow and, and let that dry and use that as an underpainting. So you might have seen that one uh, too. Those were great. If you haven't, I'll, I can drop a link in the chat. Um, <coughs> Plumpy Lump. I've been on a hunt. If anybody can help, any suggestions for a cool color that tricks my eye into thinking it's warm? Interesting. Um, I think something like a lilac could work. I know a lot of artists have been using that, like Alvaro Castanet. I think Andy Evenson also. Uh, lilac y kind of, it looks a bit, it's a bit more uh, opaque, but it, it is very interesting actually, because it, it looks a little purple warm, but it's actually cool. Um, hmm, what else? You know, it's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if such a thing even exists technically, but I kind of get what you're saying. Things in the right context can look warm or cool too. So that's one more thing to have in mind. Um, 
So I think I'll just let the video run one more time for those who missed it, because I've seen someone else missed it. Share screen. Let's bring in um, this tab and share that, um, just to put it in the background. Uh, maybe like this, a bit smaller. And that way I can go here in the center. You can see a bit more of me. Or maybe I'll just rotate my camera. There we go. <laughs> uh, hoping the quality is a little better than the last time because it is supposed to be 1080p. But again, all of these things are going to greatly improve. Going to improve the webcam, going to improve a bunch of stuff. You'll see things are going to get much slicker. Um, Ishtar painting, uh, Ishtar al-Baghdadi. Hi from Dubai. I love your videos and your art critique to other artists. Thank you so, so much. I uh, really do appreciate it. It's the first time I see you on a live stream, so thank you for being here. If it's really the first time or I missed it, uh, much, much appreciated. Uh, Kendra, hi, Leron. Thanks for answering our questions. I've been trying to work on a painting of an earthworm. Weird, I know, but I can't seem to get the slime effect. Any hints? So slime, like wetness, right? Icky. That usually happens with the reflections of light because of a slimy surface's smoothness. It tends to have a lot of small white highlights. One thing to think about. Uh, I hope that can help. If you even look at my uh, video on how to paint a Mercedes logo um, where there's strong contrasts, I think that's the same effect you're going for. The only difference is it's going to be mostly very light highlights and not a lot of sharp turns, but rather round turns. Um, Let's see, Nancy, thanks for sharing your creative journey with us. So inspiring. Thank you so much. And Kathy, I'm not sure what that relates to, but yeah, definitely <coughs> have fun. Uh, Marjorie, how are you doing? Uh, Wu-Tang Film is wrapping up and other daughter can come to help me get paint in post. Uh, late uh, turning in today, uh, not doing great, but uh, watching helps. Mood, yeah, very happy I can help the mood. Uh, yeah, so you got my email, right? I didn't see a reply, but I sent you, and you probably got it. Uh, so yeah, I sent you the up, updated address. Someone special. I'm struggling with wet and wet technique. Almost always it gives me unwanted blooms. Any tips, please? More water on paper and concentrated paint on brush seems to help, but need expert opinion. Good. I'm happy you said that because that's like the, hey, Marina, how are you doing? Uh, I'm very happy you said it because that's the one thing that's like the first thing to recommend, right? Make sure the paper is wet enough. Make sure the paint and the brush is thick enough. Um, if you get unwanted blooms by following all of these, um, it could be that you're, uh, even if you pre-wet the paper enough, twice even, if you take a long time to mix, by the time you bring the paint over, it could start to dry. And it could be that you're going too thick with the paint. So one thing to have in mind. Another thing is usually these kinds of issues come from the paper. Um, so I would look into making sure you're using good paper. Sometimes it can happen due to the bead. So if the paper is at an angle, or even if it's not at an angle, the paint just stands there. There's sometimes too much water, and it can dry unevenly. So I would use the brush, a dry brush, to absorb the bead back. But mostly it's going to be your paper. So I would make sure you use a good one, and I would play around with using cold press. A bit because it tends to be a little more forgiving when it comes to blooms uh, aside from all of these best practices uh, i'll tell you to email me with a picture and let me know if you can film yourself that'll be even better uh, then i can definitely comment real fast and tell you what you're doing maybe off uh, but yeah hey marina again uh you got it uh gillies uh plumpy love try moonglow oh that's interesting yeah I think I have Moonglow. I barely used it. Uh, MX Killer 10X. Hello, just popped by. Thank you for being here, uh, my friend Kakashi. <laughs> uh, Kendra, thanks. That definitely helps. Kathy Meg, uh, the sound effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's gonna be, uh, yeah. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I tried not to have too much fun at your uh, the quality of the live stream expense, but yeah, I can play around with these things on my own in a private stream too. Uh, Plumpy Lam, thank you. Oh, yeah. Lillian, uh, can you please show how uh, you do with Red Spray Bottle? Yeah, I'll show the technique soon. Um, I still haven't filmed anything with it, but I would love to share that. Yep. Uh, yep. Thank you for sending me stuff. Like, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, question, who would you say your favorite artist? Ooh, myself. <laughs> Someone special. Thanks, Duran. I shifted recently to cold press and getting better results. Good, good. I'm happy to hear. Is it 100% cotton? Uh, that can help a lot. If it's pulp paper, it can be tough. 
um granulating particles will oh i see what you mean you think so are they too large will it clog it up interesting interesting um i got some granulation effects on the other painting i did but that has nothing to do with the spray interesting i'll have that in mind um uh, but yeah uh, let me know if you have any questions and i think we can start moving towards wrapping today up uh, i know it's going to be a little shorter but i'm trying to you know if i have anything important to say i'll say it and if i'm not i'm going to focus on making more cool content for you and painting and improving my skills um just to give you a, a quick like fun update on the manga comic which very few but uh, a significant few are interested in if it's 10 people that's great uh thank you so much mx um I have been working on it a lot, and I'm going to start drawing it soon. Yes, I have had a few false starts in the past, but now I have a story that's tight for one shot. Just one, around 60, 70 pages. We're done. It's very nice. Nice characterization. Characters, the theme, the plot is pretty much ironed out. It's just about now turning it into something really beautiful. And I'm very excited about that. Hopefully, it's going to be famous and successful. This is definitely uh, something I'm looking forward to. I have some character designs I shared uh, on my stories. Um, uh, MXC are very funny and just brighten up my day. Enjoy this out. Thank you so much. Uh, more tutorials, indeed. There will be many, many more. Um, I'm trying to, and bye-bye, uh, Gillies. Uh, I'm trying to uh, go back to doing sporadically uh, three videos a week. So this week is going to be that. I'm going to post uh, Saturday's videos. is going to be out. It's already uploaded and everything. It's going to show you a process where I don't like a lot of aspects of the result. And I made a few major mistakes by my book. But there's a bright spot, and that is that I'm onto my mistakes, and I managed to fix them. Uh, and you will see me learning from the mistake in real time and then improving the result. So that's going to be really fun. Uh, you seem to work very quickly and that's a bit daunting. Is it okay to be slower? Yes. One thing to have in mind is I mix fast and I sometimes apply the paint fast, but I actually am taking breaks between uh, these different washes. Let me freeze frame on... Um, Oh, let me just sh shut this, or maybe let's let's just rewind it. Sorry, I know if you're sick of seeing it in the background, my apologies. Um, but yeah, so uh, you were saying, yeah, um, I am taking a lot of breaks in between. I just cut out some staring parts. I am looking at what's going on on paper, spending some time just letting it be, letting it breathe, maybe spraying some water on it. I am doing a lot of that. It is okay to work slower. In fact... I have a tutorial or two with me working slower. If you want to work slower, first off, you need to use more water to give you more time. And that is perfectly okay. Um, and you can just make the decision to do it. Yeah, you don't have to work as fast as I am. Definitely not. Uh, and just to let you know, if anyone suspects this video is not sped up, that's actually my, my speed of painting. Uh, it is a bit fast, I'll admit. Probably because it's hot press paper. Uh, Robin, what's the name of your YouTube for manga? My daughter wants to watch you. Oh, thank you so much. It's called Liron Pop. It's sometimes hard to find because it's not a big channel. Uh, let me try and share a link. Uh, Liron Pop. Um, one second. I did a few reactions to anime there to Attack on Titan, but it will become more about me. So don't worry. It's just the very initial stages. Okay. Don't mind the creepy character in the thumbnail. So it's that. I think that's the link, hopefully. Um, I put it in the chat. It's this. And thank you so much. Um, I will start to learn like what to post there more. But So the short videos are manga and, and different stuff. You can see there actually a new character design for the manga, uh, which is fun. Um, but the rest is just reactions to Attack on Titan things will shift and evolve there. It's really the initial stages. Um, Plumpy says they run greater than Tori Bot. I don't know what Tori Bot is. I'll have to Google that. Tori Bot. Tori Bot. Character based on Akira Toriyama used to represent himself. <laughs> it's funny. That is funny. Tori Bot. Ah, like Toriyama. Okay, Tori, Toriyama. That's funny. That's funny. You know, I just realized in the last couple of days, my Japanese is darn good. I'm listening to songs I've never heard before, and I understand like a third of them, half of them even. 
John said, thank you for another awesome live stream. Really run. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so, so much, John. Uh, Deep, how should a beginner artist charge for their artworks? Um, my rule of thumb is to always charge what would make me happy. Whether it's on the low end or on the high end, I cannot feel like I've been robbed. Um, it's sometimes not easy to really feel, get a feel for what you feel like is fair. So you just don't know what you'll be happy about, uh, which could pose a challenge. Uh, but yeah, it's such a wide array and every type of art is different. You can look at your market and let that kind of dictate it. Or you can ignore it because you know that your art is different and it, you know, it's just, just it's so hard to answer this question. Um, 22 Dynamic Duo. Oh, okay, lol. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't realize more water. Yeah, that's one option. You know, it's not the, the only option, but uh, you could just work slower. And whatever happens, happens. It should work okay. It should work out. Uh, Megan, you can absolutely use granulating colors like cobalt blue and ultramarine in a spray bottle. Interesting. Did you uh, play around with it? It's more important to use paints that don't have oxgall in them. Oxgall is a hardening agent. Interesting. So would that separate from the paint in the bottle or would it just clog it and kind of stay on the, with time, will be more more thicker layer and prevent it from working? Curious. Uh, Massimo, uh, arrived late, greets from Italy. Massimo, you have one of the favorites, my all-time favorite names. I love this name. I don't know why. I, I hope that's your actual name. I love this name. Uh, Pauline, I got to go. Love your chats. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Robin, you got it. Uh, uh, John Leron would love your new address, please. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I'll send it to you. Uh, I need to write in, in notes or I'll forget everything. Here, so I'm going to write a note uh, to send you the new address. Uh, Sebastian, uh, just noticed you were live. Hello from the French guy living, the French guy living in Spain. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, so if anyone wants to know when I go live, you have this uh, bell button on the on the you know next to the subscribe button. It should be there, right? I think it's still there. Um, where you can receive notifications whenever I go live via email or via the app. Uh, just so that you know, but just so you know, this is my normal time. Every Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. That's the time for the live stream. Email. Oopsie doopsie. That's not what I was trying to do. Email. No, come on. Don't drive me crazy. Email John. New address. Thank you so much. Yeah, if I don't write these things down, I'm going to forget. Bye for an hour. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Greg Van uh, Gastel. Is it Gastel or Gastel? Let me know. Watching your painting is inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, going to keep practicing. Yes, that's the one thing everyone should do is just keep practicing. Um, you know, I don't want anyone to get the impression that it actually takes like a long time to improve and that it's hard and it should be hard. Because These things are very easy if you find your own cadence, I guess, if you find what you enjoy and and you truly want to enjoy it, if you truly devote yourself to it. Um, and it's something that I don't know how to explain how to do. It's not a how to. Um, but if you're experiencing a lot of mental challenges while painting, just know that there is a reason for that. And if you're curious enough to find the reason out and to be honest with yourself, you can find a reason for that and things can become effortless. Just know that it is possible. Um, but yeah, I wish I had better insights. This, these are very high level problems for me to handle, right? It's above my pay grade uh, for sure. But in any case, I think that's a good point uh, to wrap this one up on. Uh, if you want to see more of the process, you can rewind, of course. I've showed it multiple times and yes, that's a great saying. Um, Megan, uh, or saying, just a great uh, comment. Uh, Liron, yes, I tried it, but I haven't been able to find a good bottle for it as I don't want to order any from US shipping. Yeah, you know, locally, it was very hard for me to find a good bottle, spray bottle. I ordered mine off of Amazon, I think, at the end of the day, or I took it from, like, there was something else in it, and I used that, you know. Uh, Sebastian just upgraded my palette to a 32-pen travel artist set from Rembrandt. An upgraded sketchbook to cold press from Strathmore. Aren't these upgrades fun, you know? I'm now upgrading stuff around the studio, and it's so much fun. 
and sometimes I feel so dumb for this is different because like you know these upgrades are they come in the right moment but sometimes I feel so dumb for using something inferior or something that's not as comfortable to use you know I'll give you one example right now I have my and I can actually show you let me do this this is my art desk right here and this is the camera. Now you'll notice it's connected directly to the socket behind the table. You can't see it. But this means I never have to charge my camera ever again. It's just there always charged. And I have found myself in the past needing to charge my camera, which feels ridiculous. So all of these small comfort and ease of use changes, they're just huge, you know? And once I get the streaming down and recording, I can record using OBS and bring in tons of different cameras and just film everything in one go, show everything in one go. It's gonna make the process a lot easier. Everything is gonna work fast. I'm gonna design the studio. I have some great plans for the background too. I know it's not something special right now, but it's gonna be nice. This closet's gonna be open. There are some nice details in it. Uh, there will hopefully be some nice lights too. Gonna to make this room look super cool. My goal is funny enough, to make this space so cool that my friends want to come work here instead of from their own homes. Uh, Esmeralda, uh, hello from Venezuela. Good work. Thank you so, so much. So with that, we'll wrap it up. Once again, I have to thank you for being here. Much, much appreciated. All the support, all the kind comments. Um, everyone who watches, likes, comments, supports on Patreon, gets a course, gets a book, these things are huge for me, and it's how I'm able to continue doing what I'm doing. Uh, so I don't, I don't tend to, you know, market myself too much. But in recent year and a half, I started making more of an effort uh, after people told me about to do it, viewers. Uh, so I'm super grateful because up until this point, I never have to be pushy with my products. I just try and give value, and the people who are meant to find the courses and the books and everything find them. So thank you so so much, and I know it's many of you. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. With that, we'll wrap it up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this format. Let me know. And anyone who watches this after the fact, feel free to let me know in a comment if you enjoy this because I can do more like longer processes and the entire thing is just us watching because this was a relatively short one. I wanted to test it out. But, you know, some processes are an hour, two hours long. Um, I can definitely do something like this. Thank you, Plumpy Lump. Thank you, Bev. Much, much appreciated, everyone. We'll see you soon and on Saturday's video. So I hope you'll enjoy this one too. We'll talk soon. Mm-hmm.